I'm Phil Guyman. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years. Now I'm retired, but I still train as hard as I can to set the best times on the toughest climbs I can find and go on fun adventures on my bike all over the world. This is Worst Retirement Ever. If you're wondering why I look cold, uh, I'm not in Los Angeles at the moment. We are in Boise, Idaho. So I came up to Idaho to do uh, Rebecca's Private Idaho. That'll be the next video. That's a fun gravel event I've been to do a long time. Um, on the way there, I was like, all right, Boise, I know there's a hill that I want to go for. I have a spreadsheet on my computer of, uh, of KOMs that I want to attempt. And then on a different tab is cookies I want to try. And, uh, and there were two boxes I was able to check here. In, in Boise, one is the Bogus Basin Hill Climb, which is an event. Um, so I'm going to go for that KOM, and then the other one is uh, Necker Coffee, is a local cyclist spot, and they have a delicious brown butter sea salt. So this box I was able to check, uh, the next box will be a little questionable. So we flew into Boise yesterday afternoon, um, I kind of just cruised around the uh, downtown Main Street area, super cute downtown. There was a, a lot of breweries. I had a trout for dinner, local trout is a thing. Um, this morning I woke up and I'm trying, I don't know what goes on in Boise. I guess there's a, there's potatoes is the big industry in Idaho. We know from their license plates. It doesn't say, it says famous potatoes. It doesn't say the biggest producer of potatoes because I'm told they make more in Washington. Um, but that's probably a touchy subject around these parts. Everyone's super polite, which is weird. I know I'm not in LA because people like don't fight to get to the line in front of you. So I had a nice time downtown, and then this morning I looked out my window, and the sky was filled with hot air balloons. Um, and I was I had, to, I had to ask Emily to have a look out the window to make sure that someone didn't slip me some weird drugs. From a cycling perspective, uh, this town is known for Kristen Armstrong, is from here, three-time gold medalist. I have been to Boise, racing around possibly this street uh, at night way too fast, but uh, Boise Twilight Crit is an annual event that still goes on. Uh, there's a youth development program here called BIRDS, which is where uh, that brings us to, to the next part. BIRDS was the development team for Will Barda and Matteo Jorgensen, who has the KOM that I'll be going for, but not really. You might remember Matteo from uh, a couple of years ago on my channel. I did a, I did a video uh, griping about pros taking Strava KOMs. He's a pro. He's a real pro. Uh, he rides for Jelly Belly. Um, he got some big results as a junior. He's going to be a name that you've heard of. And pros shouldn't be allowed on Strava. Okay, these pros, like Mateo, are ruining Strava. <laughs> got it by almost a minute. Um, so let that be a lesson to you pros out there. Pros, stay off of Strava. Stick to your silly little bike races, you know, where you pedal around in circles with other people close to you. Do what you gotta do. What you're gonna witness today is actually a race within a race. Um, there's the KOM attempt, and then there's the race to uh, check out time of the hotel. It's 12.30, and I've gotta get to catch them uh, for Rebecca's Private Idaho. So uh, we're gonna have to hustle here, which, you know, any motivation is good motivation. Um, I do, I have a couple advantages on Mateo. I'm not sure what his gear was. But uh, I do have my, my aero bike, the Factor Ostro, um, which I think for a 4% gradient, this is definitely one where like wind is going to be a factor, aerodynamics is going to be a factor. Um, I also have a factor. I'm also going to have uh, I have my aero helmet from from Laser. This is this is my first time using this on a video. I like it. A, it's it's uh, it's good when it's a little colder out because there's less ventilation. But you've got the you can open the the thing for the vents or you can close them for faster uh, wind you know, golf ball, aerodynamics, and whatnot. The, the climb itself, it's almost 15 miles. Uh, the, the fastest time is Mateo at just over 50 minutes. Um, and then the next times are all a good bit down in the 53s, 54s. Uh, Chris and Armstrong, I believe eighth all time at 55 minutes. Wild. All right, and to provide some commentary uh, on this KOM while I'm out riding, uh, we have the actual KOM holder. Why does it say I'm talking to Will Barda? Because <laughs> my computer broke. It's on his computer. Um, I know you're the real deal, Matteo, because this was uh, this was the scheduling was based around your massage. Yes. Um, yeah. So where where are you right now? I'm in Nice. Uh, I'm in my apartment in Nice. Yeah, my my massage got canceled. So your agent is fired. You're changing team. Yeah. 
<laughs> Pros are allowed to be on Strava now. That's that's just over with. You 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 folks might have if you didn't see Matteo on my uh, on my YouTube, you might have seen him like tearing up the tour of Britain. What else? What are your you've been killing it this year, by the way? Congratulations. Uh, yeah, it's been a long season. We finally had a season without uh, without like major COVID complications. It was like my kind of I felt like it was my neo pro year because last year I only had I don't know fifteen or twenty race days, but um yeah this year i was able to do a grand tour i did the giro and i started the season yeah super in super good form in Paris nice and then slowly from then on just got a little bit worse and worse and worse until the giro and yeah i barely made it to the end of the giro like last week i was yeah on my hands and knees just uh yeah barely riding but yeah, oh, yeah. i took, a, too, took yeah. a long break in the summer and um yeah, I've had a good a good second half of the season. All right, so so now on from racing to more important things like Strava, and and I will say you get Strava like you don't mess around on there. You're targeting your segments. You're not like like my generation. We wouldn't. I didn't know where the segment would start and end. When I was training, I would just train. Like you go out there and admit it. You target you target the segments. You go for it. Uphills and downhills. You're all over I, the canyons. Here. I refuse to admit that. I've never logged on to Strava. Just automatically uphills. No, no, I actually, I actually do like Strava a lot. I use it, um, yeah, a lot. And like, yeah, last year when I got this KO and when I got Bogus, it was during COVID and it was a bit of a lockdown. I mean, in the US, not so much yep. of a lockdown, but uh, we weren't racing at all. So I was using Strava a little bit. I, I, with my coach, I was like, okay, let's just like, I don't know, let's just train really, really hard. And then once I'm in good enough form, I'll just like, you know, go and take, this calm or this calm and, yep. and try to do because it, it can yeah it mirrors like a, a real race effort because you know you have an objective other than just like pushing watts on your power meter you're trying to like do something a little bit more so it can push you a, a little tiny yeah. bit more than training yeah no your coach tells you to do an interval and you go hard but you go for a kom just go a little bit harder that's yeah all. yeah 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 uh, so you're you're from boise right mm -hmm. yep yep um, just a little bit i Super cool town. I was uh I was surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's it's a great town. It's changing a lot. Like since I grew up there, yeah, it's booming. From people, people from California are moving there in huge, huge numbers, especially like during COVID. Tell me about Bogus Basin, the climb, the event. Yeah. They have a hill climb there. Yep. Uh, yeah, Bogus is like the the main main climb in Boise. There's not there's no other climb that's you know even close to as long and there's a bunch of little like neighborhood climbs near the city that are I don't know between two and five minutes but bogus they paved it a super nice road all the way to the ski resort like a long time ago and so it's like the the crown jewel of Boise riding and you kind of do it uh pretty much yeah multiple times a week if you're riding a lot and right uh, uh yeah these days when i'm in boise i pretty much do it every single day it's like the only ride Good that day. i don't work that i don't get just completely cracked on because i've i've ridden there so many years that it's like yeah there's just not that many roads and i just do bogus pretty much every day so yeah it's it kind of felt like like not quite as long but a little bit like mount lemon where like you could go up a there's not that many cars but you could go up at whatever pace you want you could sort of like go yeah. there do your work you could go no it's a good you. gradient you know it's like uh I think it's like 5% average or something. Yeah. There's like little downhills, but when you're actually climbing, it's probably like close to six, you know, like when, when it's actually going uphill. So for me, that's a pretty, uh, it's like a nice gradient. You can do efforts and you, you have a little bit of a sensation of speed. It's not so steep. And for a big guy like me, it's, it's not a, uh, not so bad. But you're huge. You're what are you 160 pounds? <laughs> yeah. I'm like 72 kilos or something. Yeah. Now here's me giving you advice, which I'm not qualified for, but I will say like, as there's a certain window, I can speak to this now as I'm 35, there's a certain window where you're gaining power, you can get stronger. That window closes, buddy. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> so I wouldn't worry about the weight. I don't, now. You I don't want to end, yeah. Yeah, just get as many, just get, grab those watts as, as much as yeah. you can. And then, and then, yeah. you know, worry about that kilo when you're, when you're 29 or so. That's good advice. Uh, and you can't get the power anymore. That's the, that would be my trick. Um, no, that is good advice. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what they tell me as well. So. Talk about the hill climb real quick. Yeah, the race, um, it's usually a yearly event. I don't know if it's happened in the past couple of years. These days, it's like one of the only Boise races. Uh, it's kind of 
yeah there's not a ton of local racing it kind of has yep. been doing doing for years and years but yeah the, i mean it's an easy race to put on you know they they close the road and it's it's a super fun event even i think there's tons of people that come out you know it's not just like people wanting to race it's just people like it's a mass start right yeah exactly there's people at the front who are trying to win and there's people who are just like i'm gonna get up this and yes that's the, yeah yeah, oh, yeah. Cool i probably did it every year of like my childhood you know like probably from 10 or 11 years old all the way to i don't know 18 That's or something cool. maybe so i missed track your times just <laughs> yeah 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 no it was funny i like when you do the event it's almost like you don't get as fast of a time because it's like mm -hmm. you're racing and there's right. like it's not so steep that it's just like a pure a pure like watt fest everyone's yeah, like yeah. sitting on and you don't really go quite as fast so i think like if you go for it in person it's a faster faster way to do it right i was told there was there was the day that you got it i was told there was kind of half a scandal involved where the day before you uh you motor paced it and then someone got mad or everyone got mad you can't motor pace on strava you should yeah. know that as a world tour guy you have to Right. Yeah, I'll admit to that. I uh, I did motor pace it. A few, it was like three days before, I think. And okay. uh, yeah, I got flagged. I, I I think I went four or five minutes faster than the current uh, KOM. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a very motor paceable climb. You know, For so. sure, yeah. Just and I think I even did more watts behind the scooter. I was like, I did a better performance behind the scooter. Yeah. But, but yeah, I was a little bit too ashamed to not, I just had to go back and do it again, but I didn't yeah. want to. It, it so felt were, really, it felt really bad the second time. That effort's not fun. It's so long. It's like, oh, it did not, yeah. it was not fun. Yeah, it was, it was nasty, but you still took the KOM from whoever else by a lot of minutes. Uh, I, I would say yeah. that one's pretty safe for a while. Yeah, yeah. No, Kai uh, Applequist, the second place guy, is like kind of a local, um, yep. a local legend racer, and he um, he had it for a long time. I think he got it during the race. He had like a, yeah, he had like a strong team, strong local team, and they kind of like a bit of a, a lead out for him, oh, like cool. up the climb. And yeah, he he had it by a, a good margin for a long time. But yeah, I I didn't even really. I, I remember looking. I don't. I didn't I didn't like have a time that I was trying to go for set out because it's like it's just hard to figure out how fast you're going to go when it's like you know wind actually plays a part on a climb like that and stuff so but afterwards I was like so close to breaking 50 it would have been would have been cool to break 50 but not quite oh, well uh, you, you've got a couple more years I think uh yeah you still do your off seasons in I don't know if I want to ever go for it again but <laughs> We'll see. Someone gets someone puts 10 seconds on you, you'll find the motivation to go for it. That's again. true. That is true. I was hoping you would, but yeah, and no, I was too. I yeah, I'm 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 not in I'm I'm not in the great shape. Uh yeah. I'm I'm in less shape than I was at the stunt time, but also like pretty bad for me. I'm I'm getting back. Uh, okay. That was okay. that was a good that was a good motivation for me of just like, man, I knew Mateo was gonna beat my ass, but I didn't mm -hmm. think it was gonna be that bad. I mean, to be honest, I, I spent a few winters like in the LA area and, um, and I've been I, like every winter I look at, I look at some of like the climbs and I was like, I always think like, oh, I don't think I could take, like, I really don't think I would get close. To it's no, it's true. I think you could, I don't think you'd have a lot of trouble. Um, I think, uh, I think 2021 Mateo, I mean, I don't know. mind you, don't you dare come over here, but uh, <laughs> I think, I think you'd be okay. Do you have any tips for for someone else who wants to get to Boise and uh, and and give this climb a try? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's kind of at a bit of elevation, so I think you kind of have to watch your effort a little bit. You finish at like almost two thousand meters or like whatever six thousand yeah. feet, so it's like you finish at real elevation. So you have to kind of you have to watch your effort. You can't. And it's also just not like it's it's not a steep climb so you can't like there's no sections where you can make up a there's no steep parts where you can make up a bunch of time it's kind right. of just like a, it's almost a perfect ftp test like it's almost an hour it's like right. it's so steady you can just do exactly like the same you can just hold your power exactly the same so i think yeah i would just like go at threshold and then you know try to lift in the last i don't know 10 minutes if you possibly can but did you I break couldn't. it up for the couple kind of downhill recovery sections? I was really excited to get to those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think I pedaled all of them. Like, I don't think I, uh, I think I tried to do like the same power 
I think I honestly just tried to hold, maybe I coasted a little bit of one yeah. of them, but I think I tried to just hold like just perfect threshold the whole time. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And I, I wish I'd known that. I still would have been beaten by a lot, but uh, no, I was, I was trying to like be smart and dynamic and recover on the downhills and whatnot. Um, That's probably smart. That's probably smart. It, I went truly deep. I remember the last couple, like the, at the end, it flattens off. And yeah. I, remember, I remember like getting to the part where it flattened off and like I kind of in my head the whole time told myself that was the finish line, like right. where there's still probably like two, three K to go there. Right. But I got there and I was like, holy shit, I actually there's still like I still have to keep going. You know, it's like right. the segment's not over. What were the conditions the day you did it? Uh, I don't really remember. I think it was yeah. calm. I don't think it was a headwind nor a tailwind. But. Yeah. The, yeah. uh, that was, that was similar to mine. I think it was like, there was, there, I don't think the wind helped or hurt. Cool, man. Thanks. Thanks for, thanks for joining. Um, hope you get massage. Good luck at worlds. Uh, Thank you. you doing the road race and the TT or just the road race? Road. TT was today a road race. Just, oh, just gotcha. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pro men road race. So first, first real, uh, you know, elite championship. Yep for me so it's i was watching good. britain you are ready sir sounds good phil ciao yeah. <coughs> well that was uh worse than expected and i expected it to be bad really i'm just still getting back in shape from the overtraining and whatnot so it's good got work to do enjoyed the climb is a good part hotel checkout time is 12 30 and i gotta get up to uh to catch on idaho pretty soon so I'm gonna off camera wipe the snot off my face. And you know, maybe it's not a great idea. It's just like, oh, I'm on the way here. I'm gonna go for this really hard KOM. Um, you know, next week I'm gonna, I'm just gonna fly through Monaco and grab Richie Ports on the Madone. <laughs>